Hi, I'm James, and in today's video we are taking a look at this, which is the brand new Dell Inspiron 16 5620. This video guide also basically applies for the 5625 model as well, which is very similar but features AMD components inside. So to start off with, we are using a Philips size O screwdriver bit and we are going to go around the base of the laptop removing all the screws except these two corner screws to begin with. This is a fairly standard construction for a modern Dell and so we just need this screwdriver and a small pry tool and with those we should be able to do pretty much everything we need. We have just posted up a review of this laptop a couple of days ago, uh, which I believe is the first review of this machine online. Um, so do check that out. I will put a card up in the top corner if you want to have a look at that. It's an interesting machine being the first that we've got our hands on with the Intel 12th generation Core i5-1235U in it and one that we are going to be testing in further videos, so do take a look on the channel or hit subscribe to see those as they come on. Particularly we're going to be comparing it to some of the recent AMD processors and core uh, 11th gen chips. So with that done, we are then going to do these two back corner screws. The reason we leave these last is that they are actually retained, so when you undo them they don't come out of the back. And once they click like that we can stop and what you can see is they have lifted the corner of the chassis here. So once we, once we get to this point, we can then take our pry tool and what we're going to do is just begin working that pry tool in along the back here to start releasing So by going in and angling that in, we can start releasing the clips from the base. And then working down this side. And then the other. With all the clips released, we're then going to just pull lightly on the base. This screw appears to still be slightly stuck, so we're just going to give that a twist. There is, I believe, a clip here in the center as well, so we just need to pull the base up to release that, and the panel will then lift off. Once inside, our first job is going to be to disconnect the battery. Uh, this is really good practice, even if you are sure the machine is off, it just, particularly on machines like this where when you open the lid, uh, you will power it on. So having the battery disconnected just ensures that you aren't accidentally working on the machine with it electrically live. So we're going to just press the pry tool on the edges of the connector here, and then gently unplug that. In terms of upgradable components, we have three things that you can really look to upgrade or replace in this machine. We have the solid state drive, which is a M2 2230 card by default, but has a 2280 mounting point, so we can fit a physically longer SSD in there without issue. We have the wireless, which has a AX 211 card from Intel in it, so not something that we're necessarily going to want to change out, but we'll show you how to do that because it may be useful in future. And then under this cover, we have a pair of DIMM slots, only one of which is occupied from the factory because this machine shipped with 8 gigabytes of memory as standard. So to start with, we're going to upgrade the RAM. We have our additional module here, and all that is needed to do is to peel back this cover push it into place and clip down. As you can see here, this says it is a DDR4 module. That is, despite being based on the 12th Gen Alders Lake chips, 
Uh, Dell have made the decision to stick with DDR4 for this particular machine and not move to DDR5. So we have DDR4 3200 modules in here. If we wanted to replace the other one, it's a simple task of lifting that flap, lifting out the module itself, and then slotting its replacement in and pushing it down so it clips into place like so. There is only a single M2 SSD slot in this machine. This does support PCI Express 4.0 devices, I believe. However, Dell have opted to only actually ship this with a PCI 3.0 device. And this is something I would really agree with, um, just from the fact that a PCI 4 SSD is going to have higher power consumption and the actual performance gains in real usage are quite small. Um, you know, theoretical performance gains are much higher throughput, but in terms of actual responsiveness, you're unlikely to see much distant difference unless you have really specific use cases. Even so, we have undone a single screw here, and with that we can then slide out the SSD. If we want to replace this particular one, then we can undo the screw here, and we could fit another M2 2230 drive into this bracket. As it is, we're going to leave this one in. So we are going to reattach the mounting screw. And I'm actually going to be refitting this SSD, but as we can see here, if we want to fit a M2 2280 drive, it is a simple case of slotting that in. It will meet up with the holder there or the retention screw there, and we can put the screw in. However, for now, I am going to return the original SSD to it, as that is a 512 gig drive already, and I'm happy to just continue using that. To replace the wireless card, we simply need to undo this one screw and lift the screw and small cover off from here. We then have two antennas connected for the wireless. So releasing those, we can pull them clear and then we can slide the card out. To insert the fresh one, we then put it in angled up slightly and we then want to just clip back on the antennas to the card. This is a bit fiddly and sorry if my hands block the view at all, it's hard to do this with uh, a good view to the camera. But with those clipped on you'll hear them gently click. We can then fetch the metal bracket and screw that back down to re replace the wireless card. With our work finished, all that's left to do now is to reconnect our battery by pushing this connector back into the slot. And then taking our base, we are going to press this down, first of all, at the front. Then we are going to find that point in the middle where it clips down there. We're then going to press along the edges, but not too close to those retained screws. And across the back. With that done, we are then going to screw down the retained screws in the back corners. Applying a little bit of pressure here can help just uh, engage some of the clips as you do so. And then all that's left to do is refit the rest of the screws to the base and we are done. I hope you found this video helpful, if you have please give it a like, 
Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as we post them in the future. And any questions, please do just ask us in the comments below. Thanks for watching.